Hello, this is Patrick Botticelli with Colonial Airstream in Lakewood, New Jersey. What we're looking at here is a 1987 Airstream Classic motorhome. It's a 345, so it's 34 foot, 5 inches long from bumper to bumper. I've been in the Airstream business for over 14 years now, and this is only the third one that ever came in on trade here at Colonial. But I just love it. It is a gorgeous motorhome, even though it shows signs of its age. Just a character in this motorhome. The front uh, grill here, this is all cast. This is not a piece of plastic here. This is all cast aluminum. It's painted in the middle. It's got the old sealed halogen bulbs, high and low beam. It's got little uh, fog lamps here in the aluminum bumper. It's got a front mounted hitch receiver for accessories off the front. Look at this beautiful design here in the aluminum badging here where it says Airstream. I love how the decal underneath, this would have been a wood grain appearance back then, how it's checkered. Now some people would actually sand this down and paint it and put some new stuff on. I just love it the way it is. All that, all those years of weathering. This piece, and the whole entire motorhome, the whole body is all aluminum like the travel trailers. Yeah, it has a split windshield, but it's a panoramic window. Very large windshield wipers. Love these little fins here at events on the side for the engine compartment. Large uh, uh, sliding window for the driver. It's got some air horns and a spotlight on top. Same style compartment that they use on the travel trailers. Insulated, weather sealed, lockable. Still use something just like this today. I love how instead of just being flat down, it actually curves in underneath to make it look just like travel trailers. They built these motorhomes in the start as an Argosy in the early 70s. So it would have been a, a beige painted exterior. And then it, uh, it went into the Excella in the late 70s. And then the Classic and the Limited all the way up until 1996. And the, uh, the mid-90s models actually had a more aerodynamic nose that looked more like a, a space shuttle. Here's the Dometic refrigerator vent. We still use something just like this today, but actually stamped in it. It says Dometic on it. This is a tag axle. So this is the drive axle, and that is just for uh, weight distribution. It's a tag axle behind it. So there's no power driving that wheel. It has zip D awnings, metal wrapped, all umbrella material. All aluminum construction on the arms, the wheels in the end. You see the material's in great shape. Clear coat's in, in good condition. That's a little bit of body damage. You have a fuel fill here. Lots of storage compartments underneath. Well, what I love about this model is uh, the rear panoramic window. So it just looks like the trailer next to it, if you look at the back profile of that trailer and you look at the back profile of the motorhome, they're very similar. This has a newer style backup camera. Has some badging from an old dealer that would have distributed these in the 80s. It's got an aluminum back bumper tow bar system. 
then this uh, spare tire housing comes down. This is made out of fiberglass, but it integrates right into the back of the motorhome here. You can see some of the original wood grain. This back window, instead of just being the glass like they do in the new ones, actually has an aluminum edging around it. I just love the, the fresh water fill here is all made out of uh, metal. Large uh, storage compartment here. Insulated, it's weather sealed, and lockable. It's all carpet lined on the inside. This is just super cool. I mean, the windows here are slide or slider style windows. Mud flaps say the word Airstream on them. This here is a, a plastic type piece that was painted. You can see the paint chipping. I think it's, it looks really nice the way it is. I would leave it. I love the added character there. Has a BF Goodrich 225, 70, 19 and a half inch rims. Look at the, where they put the outside electrical receptacle. This little compartment here. So the factory worker would have had to cut the hole here. This is mounted to the actual body itself. Um, just beautiful craftsmanship. Look at these heavy duty rivets down here. They're all buck rivets. A couple little gouges in the body. And this is a, a drawer style. I could get it open. Check that out. And it's lockable. It's a heavy duty metal lid there. Polished center support for the main awning. It's another zip D awning. And then it has a heavy duty grab handle, which had a doorbell at one point. It has a deadbolt, and then there's another added deadbolt here in the bottom. Lots of windows on the side. You got your driver passenger side windows. Then you also have these two windows here, a window in the kitchen, and a window in the bedroom. They had a map of the USA with all the different states that were traveled. Power steps. Screen door, this is the same screen door that we're using on the 2016 model. So that really hasn't changed. This style and design might have changed. This might have changed. It has an integrated step well on the floor here. Older style propane leak detector. Magazine rack. Heavy duty grab handle. Have key hooks here. There's the deadbolt. This is the actuator for uh, the older style power lock deadbolt that was here. Aluminum lined interior with uh, like a wallpaper adhesive. Speaker up above. Little reading lights over this little dinette area.
So these are barrel chairs. Both of them have seat belts. This is all the original carpet as well, which is in fair condition. Little storage compartment below. And then this folds up and lifts the stores away. There's a VHS and DVD above. Must have been an older subwoofer. These are all solid cabinetry throughout, lined. There's a raised panel construction. And then it has a uh, little blinds behind, a little curtain. This might have been af added afterwards. You have the controls for the spotlight on the roof, passenger and driver reading lights. There's the engine compartment here, a little hatch you could lift up. Has a glove box, 12 volt fuse panel, older style Sony AM FM cassette. You can start the generator from up here. Well, I haven't been out to this yet, and that started within a second. Excellent. You have your map lights you could turn on and off from here, which are not currently working. The froster, compartment lights, that deadbolt lock we looked at when we first came in, aisle lights, auxiliary heater, hot, high and low, little Airstream steering wheel. This has a brake controller in it, has a Roadmaster even brake, there's an MSD timing control that someone added at one point, hydraulic uh, power leveling jacks, even has an ashtray which was never used, a little map storage in the door. I love how these windows here, I just uh, not able to open this with one hand easily. That's locked. This is unlocked. There we go. Just love the mechanics of the older hardware. This privacy curtain goes all the way around the front. Have little visors up top. The seats are very plush for their model year. Almost looks like an airline seat. And this side has some controls as well. A little cup holder, ashtray, and then another map storage area. These were very, very nicely put together. For 1987, this was the flagship top of the line motorhome on the market. There's a little sofa here for a sleeper sofa. This part in the back here folds over and down to make it a little bed. And below it, there's little storage compartments. Some more storage above the sofa. Another reading light. It's an LED bulb someone upgraded to. Same blinds. Has a front air conditioning, Coleman. Look at these older style lights. Interesting. Have a speaker above the sofa. The dinette folds down into a bed. 
There's also seat belts in the dining area. They have a voltmeter plugged into the electrical outlet. Thermostat control. The mechanics of all these cabinets are just so well put together after all these years. I don't see any cracks or any separation. In the kitchen, here we have your uh, controls so you can see how much fresh water, auxiliary, main. Main is your black, auxiliary is your gray. You can see how much propane you have. You could change, you check your condition of the batteries. You could start and stop the generator from here as well. You could turn the water pipe on and the actual panel power itself on. Some switches behind the wall here. This is what the blinds look like when they're down, they're wooden. Original sink covers, plywood with a laminate on top. Mowing faucet with separate sprayer. Insta hot water. Actually, this might be, uh, yeah, it's red. It should be insta hot. You can see the outlet where that would have been plugged into in the back there to make the water hot. It's a little half gallon reservoir there. It's an access panel to the furnace for repairs. All wooden box drawers. This one flips down. Another fuse panel. And a large drawer underneath the cooktop. You could have probably got an oven this year as well. Four burner cooktop has ventilation above that vents outside. There's a louver that should open. See it open up there. And then this little stainless steel cover gives you more prep space. And this rolls up and down. Just can't believe how easy that guides. After all these years, this stuff all still works. And it has the new tone system. It's basically like a blender inside the uh, cab cabinet here. And, uh, and one of these drawers or all the accessories that you put in. So this here, take this little cap off, there's a little gear underneath, this would snap in, you can utilize this, it's a little ice crusher. All different little accessories that work with the new tone are all here. They've added a newer style microwave. And there is some more accessories here. Wow. This is pretty heavy duty stuff here. A little chopper. This is the blender attachment. Excellent. I really, really like to see that. And then this has a Dometic automatic two-way refrigerator, which was uh, not original. But what they did is they inserted the original panel look and storage above. And there's a second air conditioner unit. And in one of these cabinets, there's a little... You could select one appliance only. So pretty much front air, rear air, microwave... Uh, food blender or trash compactor. So this would have had a trash compactor, I, I guess, as an option at one point. Definitely not in here today. Uh, but you just spin the dial and pick which appliance you would like to turn on. Pretty cool stuff. Little fantastic fan with rain sensor, uh, variable uh, speed control, thermostatic control, open close lid, and you could have the fan suck air in or push out or on neutral you can manually operate it from here this is a fantastic vent that you would see 
in the 2000s models. Um, today it's a little bit different on the newer Airstream trailers. Second air conditioner in the hallway. And look at this, the door actually locks in place here. And this is what will give you privacy when you're showering from the rest of the coach ahead. Inside the shower, we have a vent line vent that goes up and down and you can turn the fan on and off. They have a curtain rod in here. I guess you could hang clothes in here as well. The shower head has two different areas to position. There's a little metal rack on the inside. And this has like a wallpaper and the bottom is an ABS plastic. Shower curtain's new. Not original equipment. A full length mirror behind the bathroom door. Got another mirror here off to the side. You got a wardrobe hook, toilet paper holder. This looks like a marble countertop. Newer style Atwood water heaters, brand new gas and electric that was added. You could turn the water pump on and off from here. You have some blinds that are metal. This little storage compartment above actually has a light behind it. Same wallpaper throughout. Another vent line vent. This handle's broken. Lights here. Little towel bar. And there's me in the mirror. Medicine cabinet. Toothbrush holder. This is just super cool. I, I really, really like and appreciate the craftsmanship and the preservation that the folks that owned it previously. They left it alone and it's got a lot of character. Look at the handles here. It's got a wooden piece in the middle. All this stuff still works. Nothing's broken. It needs to be cleaned up a bit. This is a China toilet bowl. This is newer. And then this is gapped here, so when you have the air conditioning on, it actually flows cool air back into the bedroom area. But there is a privacy shade. This is original. Look at that. It's got the faux wood grain look going to it. This motor was powered by the Chevy 454, 7.4 liter V8 big block engine. It's on a Chevy chassis. Plenty of power. A little rear wardrobe. At one point this was sold by Holiday RV Superstores. And this was a, a list of items they wanted you to know about. Have some bedding inside this cabinet. Cedar lined. Light on the inside. Wardrobe rod. Rear thermostat for the rear air conditioner. A little makeup area. Two different mirrors. Light bulbs here. They added a television or articulating arm. And I removed, I guess, the original television that was in the bedroom. Thin line light. Looks like this is a newer style retrofit. Uh, unfortunately, they had to use tape to keep the lens on. You have some wardrobe storage. And then another wardrobe here. Cedar lined. And you get that beautiful panoramic view. Someone added a shelf above the rear cap there. It has the timbre door. This is called the Island Double. They had a twin bed model available as well. This is a rear breaker panel for electrical. These are the same timbre doors, same idea as what we use today in the new Sport Bambis. This residential style light back here. Curtains on a, a rail that slides around. You got a lot of windows that open back here. Look at the valances. Instead of fabric, they're actually made out of solid wood. A little rack here over the side of the bed. It's got a headboard that separates your head from the curtain area. Rear furnace. 
and then there's storage below the bed. I don't believe this bed platform lifts up, so there's some more bedding here off to the side, but there's some more storage possibilities underneath this bed as well. But for being a small or width motorhome with no slides, it actually feels very spacious inside. Very well insulated. Came with a bundle of keys and all the manuals. A couple of service repair guides. Got a pump gas pedal on these older models. Starts right up. Goes right in gear, nice and smooth and easy. And this is true mileage unknown. This gauge cluster had to be replaced at one point. So the actual true mileage is unknown on this motorhome. By the looks of things, I, I would not estimate that it has high mileage. Just by the characteristic of everything, every aspect of this motorhome. Gorgeous day here in New Jersey. It's uh, mid October. That's 65 degrees, sunny. There's another dealer that sold this motorhome at one point. And this is a Florida inspection sticker. It's probably original from when it was originally sold. There's more compartments here. These are all locked. Look at these rims here. These uh, have an Airstream logo on them. They're all cast aluminum. And the tires look like they're in great shape. Underneath, there's very little rust. See the jacks here. Newer style exhaust systems that was replaced at one point. waiting to run it through the shop. I haven't priced this yet. Just want to make sure it's safe. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. This is Patrick with Colonial Airstream in Lakewood, New Jersey. Our website is www.colonialairstream.com and our telephone number is 1-800-265-9019. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it. I'll see you soon.